Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Happy Friday to all of you. I've been getting a lot of emails on questions with solar generators, like what's the best solar generator for me to get? So I thought I'd put together this video real quick to let you know what it is that I look for in a solar generator if I wanted to do a certain job. So hopefully after this video, you'll be able to identify what kind of solar generator you should get for your needs and at what cost. Uh, so you can identify whether you're paying too much for a solar generator or if it's a good deal or if that solar generator is going to suffice what you need in order to power your needs during a power outage. So let's go ahead and start with this first. We are going to cover two solar generators today, ladies and gentlemen, and they both $799 a piece. I'm not going to include what brand or what they are. I'm just going to include the specifications of each solar generator because they are priced identical at $799. And this is not about promoting one or another. This is just hopefully you can get something out of this video. That way you can decide what's best for you. Now, the first thing that we're going to cover is the battery capacity. How much energy will that battery store and hold for you for when you need it? The battery type, what kind of battery does it have? It does make a difference what kind of battery it has. The life cycles, meaning how many times can you charge and discharge that battery before it starts to lose capacity, all right? Before it starts to lose the ability to store X number of watt hours of electricity. The output capacity, meaning what can you plug into that generator and how much energy can you get out of it at once continuous, right? The second one would be the surge capacity, meaning if that generator has a surge in wattage, like let's say, for example, you're running a refrigerator and the compressor turns on, it's going to have a surge in wattage. What is the surge capacity of that solar generator? That way, if you have more than one thing plugged into it and they all surge at the same time, that it won't trip out on you. The input capacity, if you're charging that solar generator via your AC wall outlet or let's say your uh, car 12 volt outlet, how much energy will it take in at any one time? Now the input capacity solar, same as above, but using solar panels. And then the last thing, which is not a deal breaker 100%, but the LED panel. How easy is it for you to be able to diagnose what it is that your solar generator is doing at any given time during use? All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first one. Remember, both of these are priced at $799, and I just want to give you a, a good grasp as to what it is that I look for, and maybe you can look for when you're deciding to purchase a solar generator at whatever price range or size range that you're looking for. Here are the specifications of the first one. So you can see here the battery capacity is 1,002 watt hours. What does that mean? I'm gonna put it in as simple terms as I possibly can. Let's say that you have a one watt LED bulb plugged into your solar generator, that you're charging it, right, with a solar generator. It means that you will be able to provide electricity to that one watt LED bulb for 1,002 hours. So you're using one watt per hour, you'll be able to power that for 1,002 hours. It has 1,002 watt hours. Now don't think that because it says 1,002 watt hours that it's going to be able to power that LED light bulb for 1,002 hours. Because wherever there is uh, electricity, there's a little bit of heat. Wherever there is heat, there's a little bit of friction. So it does bring down the efficiency just a little bit. So depending on the quality of the solar generator, on this one specific, let's say that that LED light bulb, instead of powering it for 1,002 hours, maybe for 950 hours or so. All right, so let's say that because they're, they are not 100% efficient and really nothing is. Wherever, like I said, wherever there is heat, there is friction, etc. it's not going to be 100%. But anyways, for this case, we'll say it'll power that LED light bulb for 1,002 hours. The battery type on this, the battery type is a lithium ion battery. There are two battery types that I've seen on solar generators and that I that I actually own solar generators of both battery types. Now let me go ahead and show you what the difference is between a lithium ion and a lithium iron phosphate. So here I just went onto the internet and I asked, what's the difference between a life pole and a lithium ion battery. And here it says a LIFEPO, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, is not the same as a lithium ion battery. 
right? The life pole battery has a life cycle of over four times that of a lithium ion battery, meaning that the lithium iron phosphate battery will charge and discharge up to four times more than your lithium ion battery. So this tells me by looking at the specifications for this for this solar generator right here that it has a battery that is not the best battery that's being used in the market right now. And here you can see that this one has a lithium ion battery, so it has a less superior battery. Battery life cycle on this one is 500 cycles, which is not that great. And then it goes with the output. I'm not really concerned about the uh, how many outlets and all that kind of stuff it has. You'll have to decide which one to get depending on your needs, like how many outlets it has, how many USB chargers it has. But this one, you can see that the rated power, the rated power of output is 1000 watts continuous, meaning that if you hook in any personal devices or appliances or whatever that equal up to 1000 watts being drawn from that unit continuously at the same time, that it will be able to handle that load with a surge capacity of 2000 watts. So if everything surges or something surges, it will, it will withstand up to 2000 watts for a certain number of seconds before it trips out. So this is not bad when your surge capacity is about twice as much as what your output capacity is continuous. Now let's take a look at everything else. Okay, everything else here is pretty much what they provide as the peripherals that you can use for charging. So let's take a look at the input capacity. So this has two ways that you can input or you can charge the unit itself. It has a charging capacity from like a wall outlet, from a car, and uh, it also has a charging capacity from a solar panel. So the charging capacity for the eight millimeter port, which is pretty standard for, for input uh, ports, in the solar generator industry is 200 watts max which for this size solar generator a thousand watt hours roughly it's not bad it means that it'll take roughly five five and a half hours to charge it from zero to full not too bad so five no about four and a half five hours all right uh for the anderson charging port which is your solar panel charging port it has the same capacity of 200 watts not not great but not bad all right it's pretty standard uh, it has a safety protection overcharge. Almost every single solar generator will have an overcharge protection, okay? Uh, but that's not what I'm really looking for here. I'm looking for what it can actually do. And that's pretty much it for this one. So let's take a look at everything that this one right here has to offer. So this is the first solar generator we're looking at, and it has all of these things to offer right here. It's $799. It has a battery capacity of 1,002 watt hours. A battery type is lithium ion, which is not the best, uh, which is rated at 500 or so life cycles. It has a 1000 watt output capacity. It has a 2000 watt surge capacity. It has an input capacity of 200 watts from your outlets or your car charger. And it has an input capacity for solar of 200 watts. Now let's take a look at the LED panel that this comes with. And you can see here that the LED panel for this one in particular is very simple. It just has an input in watts and output in watts. And it lets you know with a bar graph of how charged it is. So this one here has five bars, which means that each bar is equivalent to about 20% of the charge capacity of that solar generator. Pretty simple LED screen is pretty straightforward. Don't really have any complaints on this. I would like to see a, a little more stuff on it, but remember this is $799. It's really not a super expensive solar generator. So you pretty much get what you pay for. So again, this one is the same price as the first one. The battery capacity is 992 watt hours. The battery type is a life pole battery with a rated life cycle of 3600 cycles. It has a 1200 watt output capacity, continuous, and it has a 2200 watt surge capacity, which is pretty good. Input capacity from the wall outlet, if you're charging it from your wall outlet at home, is 200 watts. And the input capacity for solar is also 200 watts. And take a look at the LED panel right here and what it has to offer. Now I have to say that the LED panel on this one is, a, is much better than the other one. Why? Because it just provides you with a little more information. So here it has a fault warning in case it trips. 
Here it has how much time there is remaining in order for it to be fully charged or fully discharged, whatever you're using it for at that time. Uh, it allows you to see if you're using the AC output or USB output, etc., etc. Uh, it has a cooling fan icon whenever the cooling fan turns on, which I don't know why they did this. You know, this is, I guess it doesn't hurt to have it, but uh, I, I never look for a cooling fan icon whenever I'm using my solar generator. But it allows you to see if you're charging with your car or if you're charging with, with the wall outlet. And it tells you how much power you've got coming in or how much power you're discharging at the same time. And of course, it gives you the amount of battery that there's left in it, the amount of capacity that there is left. So this one's a little bit better, but it's not a deal breaker. Let's go ahead and compare it. Compare both of these solar generators together and see which one I would prefer to get and that way it'll give you an idea of what it is that you're looking for i hope that this is helping i hope that i'm, that I'm explaining everything in a manner that you can understand so here are the specifications that i look for for both of these solar generators number one is the one that has 1002 watt hours where number two is 992 so number two is down by 10 watt hours so far number one has a lithium ion battery which is not as superior as a life pole battery. So number two is up on the battery. Number one only has 500 rated cycles for charge and discharge or discharge and charge. Where number two, since it has that better battery, has a 3600 discharge and charge cycle rated capacity. Number one has a 1000 watt continuous output, whereas number two has 1200 watts continuous output. Number one has a 2000 watt surge, where number two has a 2200 watt surge. And then both number one and number two have a 200 watt input capacity, meaning that you can charge the unit 200 watts per hour off your AC wall outlet and or 200 watts per hour from a solar panel. They're both the same in that. Number one, I felt that the LCD screen for number one is not superior to that of number two. Number two is a little bit better. It gives you more information. But like I said, to me, that's not a deal breaker. Now, which one of these two would I get being that they're both the exact same price, $799? I would hope that you chose this one, even though this one right here, this number two, has 10 watt hours of less energy storage capacity being that it has 992 watt hours compared to the 1002 watt hours of number one everything else in this is superior 3600 life cycles because of this life pole 4 battery in my opinion is awesome what does that mean 3600 cycles for your battery it means that you can charge and discharge number two the number two unit every single day for 3,600 days. Meaning what? Meaning that this unit's battery is rated to last at a minimum of just shy of 10 years before it starts to lose capacity. Meaning that once your 3,600 cycles are up, it doesn't mean that the unit is ready to go to the landfill. It means that you may not be able to charge that battery to 100% capacity. You may be only able to charge it to 90% capacity. And the older it gets, the less capacity. But you're getting 10 years, just about, worth of good use from number two. Whereas number one, you're looking at about, let's say, one and a half, one and three quarters a year. All right, so this, in my opinion, is a deal breaker. The deal breaker for me here would be that you get 500 cycles here and that you get 3,600 cycles here, whereas the watt hours are pretty much the same, only about a 10 watt hour difference. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope that this helped. Now, if you need to know what size solar generator or even what size generator you would need, I'm going to go ahead and leave a card in the upper right hand corner up here so that you can take a look at that video. It's one that I did a while ago and it's another question that I get quite often. What size solar generator or what size generator do I need in order to power my essentials or even to power my home during any type of a crisis? 
have a great day i do have a second video coming out today it's going to be a fun video and i haven't even taken a look at the news yet so we may even have a third video coming out later on today but since we have our live stream maybe we'll cover a little bit of our the news during our live stream but i'll definitely have a second video coming out today not sure it'll, if it'll be out before our live stream or not other than that have a great day god bless every one of you and thank you very much for joining in